today is a lesson completely in watercolor techniques. Are you yes. excited? So do you know what three kind of techniques we're going to use today? We're going to do the wet and wet technique, also salt. And what else? And even plastic wrap. Yeah, plastic wrap. Yeah, we're just going to be doing some really, really fun, easy, super basic watercolor techniques. Yeah. And you can see we've each got a piece of paper here. These are four by 10 inch papers. <laughs> and I've just taken tape and taped them down to our surface and then divided it into three equal spaces that we're gonna do our little paintings on. We just each have a brush. We each have a jar of water. And for today, you'll need some table salt. You will need <laughs> some plastic wrap. And you'll just need watercolor paint. Now it is important if you're going to do these techniques with us, if you want the same results that we're going to get, you want to have cotton watercolor paper. High quality watercolor paper is going to make or break this project. So just make sure that your paper is good and you'll be really, really excited and happy with the results, I think. All right, so grab your brush. You, you don't have to do three. You could do more than three. You could do more than three. So I'm dipping my brush in the water first and we just want to take clean water and paint all over our first rectangle. We want the paper to look glossy, but we don't want any puddles on there. So if you see some big puddles starting to form, you can just dab your brush on the paper towel and scoop up some of that water if there's just too much or on there. Or you could splat, or you could get it around the paper. So keep going, make sure you've got all the surface covered. You don't want any dry areas in your rectangle. You want it wet all the way around it. And I'm just kind of taking my brush and dabbing it on the paper towel and scooping some of the water that's maybe pooling a little bit along the edge of our tape here. If your paper starts to warp or buckle a little bit, that's okay, that's totally normal. It's just trying to handle all the water we just put on, huh? Now, before we take our paint, I'm gonna activate the paints really quick with my spray bottle by spraying them. Yep. You have to have wet paint to work with, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start with just one color, maybe up here in the corner. Take your brush and grab a color. I'm gonna do purple. Ooh. And I'm just gonna start to paint some purple in that corner. I'm gonna start doing purple too. And I'm just gonna kinda blot it around a little bit too. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush and grab another color. Let's grab this beautiful alizarin crimson. And I'm just gonna drop that in next to the purple. And because our paper is wet, it's just blending on its own with the other color. This is one of the most basic techniques in watercolor and also I think one of the most beautiful. And I'm also gonna grab this turquoise and add some of that in. Ooh, isn't that pretty? I want some turquoise too. Okay. And then I'll do a little bit of yellow on the far side because that'll look pretty next to the blue, I think. And of course, when it touches the blue, it kind of turns green, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Are you going to do yellow too or just blue? Yellow. So this is such a fun opportunity to just make colors, make the paint just bloom and blossom and look amazing and brilliant and so beautiful. So pretty, it looks like tie-dye. <laughs> Alright, now once you've laid down your paint, you just leave it alone. We don't mess with it with our brush at all, otherwise that'll just completely mess up the effect. So while that's drying, we can start the next one. The next one we're going to just use plastic wrap. Woo! So I've just taken mine and I've kind of squished it around and I've created this almost twirly shape with it. And so here's Ansley's. And I'll show you kind of how I did that. I just take an object and I hold it in the center. I'm taking my brush and I'm just kind of twirling around it. So it's making this kind of twirly shape. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did with our first square. You wanna do that again? Mm -hmm. That's fun, right? We're gonna wet the paper first with our water. Once your paper is wet again, you can start dropping in some color. What color are you going to do this time, or colors? Red, blue, yellow, green, and yellow. Whoa, a lot of colors, huh? 
That'll be exciting. If you put the red on yellow, it makes it turn orange. That is super pretty. All right, so just get a bunch of paint down. And I'm gonna show you on mine first. Taking my crumpled up paper towel and I'm just gonna try to make it the same size as my rectangle. And I'm just gonna smash it down on my rectangle. And we're gonna leave it there until it's dry. That's looking so lovely. All right, remember, don't blend all the colors together, otherwise you'll just get a muddy color. You can drop them in next to each other and that'll look nice. Are you ready to put your plastic wrap on? Yep. Super, let's see how that looks. Good, try not to touch your other rectangles. Make it a little smaller so it fits all inside that shape. There we go. Okay. It doesn't even get the corners. That's all right. It'll be so fun to see what kind of shape it makes once it's dry. Nice, so for our very last one, we just need our salt and our paint. And I think uh, this one would look really nice if we use blues because we're gonna try to kind of make it look like snow. Yeah. Oh, okay, so again, use that same method of wetting your paper first all over your rectangle. Try not to make it too wet, just glossy. And then I'm gonna take this blue and I'm just gonna kind of paint it all over. All of it? Yeah, we're gonna try to paint the whole square of that blue color. This is the ultramarine blue. It's a warmer blue. It has more red in it, you would say. And the other blue is cooler. It has more yellow in it. It's more of a greenish blue. This is pretty yeah. darker. So that's a turquoise blue that Ansley's using. And you can see it's a cooler blue, which is very appropriate for snow, I think. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on mine as well. Maybe towards the top, kind of creating this vignette almost. While the paper's still damp, this is when we have to work fast and get the salt on. Okay, so the timing will be important here. We don't want it to be puddling, so we're just gonna let it dry for maybe a few seconds, and then we're gonna take our salt. Okay, so hold out your hand. You ready? <laughs> and sprinkle the salt. Okay, don't touch it though. Do you want some more? Here, I'll let you take some. And we're just gonna gently sprinkle it on. Yeah, that's it. And then apply it. And any extra you can put in the trash right here. Oh, <laughs> so now we're just gonna let everything dry and we'll come back and show you how it turned out. Okay, everything has completely dried, so now we're gonna remove the salt. And I'm just using this big soft brush, and I have a trash can over here out of view, and I'm gonna be brushing the salt into the trash can. And if it got a little bit stuck, you might need to use your hands too. And then we'll remove that as well. Oh, look at that fun texture. You wanna take yours off? Yours looks awesome. All right, now you take your brush and brush the salt into the trash can. This is why we did this one last. That's so much salt. <laughs> so this is probably why we shouldn't use quite that much salt. All right, so now with most of that removed, we can take our tape off. It's one of my favorite parts of the process. Mine really looks like snow. It does, doesn't it? So you can see we've got some really fun textures here. You never know what's gonna happen with that. 
with that plastic wrap. And so you can see we got completely different textures out of it. And even our wet and wet, they're never gonna look alike and that's the fun of it. And this salt, of course, makes it almost look like a snowy night scene, doesn't it? So there we have our finished salt, plastic wrap, and the wet and wet technique. All wonderful basic techniques that you can use in your watercolor paintings and your kiddos will have so much fun painting. There's salt everywhere. <laughs> okay. We'll cut out that part. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and hit subscribe and turn on notifications. Notifications.